Hey, what's up, guys? You're listening to the It Takes a Village podcast. I'm Ashley, your host. This is where the struggles are real, the callings are heavy, the kids are sticky. We come together because it takes a village, and this is your tribe. Hey guys, what's up? I am so excited to hang out with you today. Just me. It's just me today. So sorry to disappoint if you're looking for an interview. You will not find that here because it's just me today. But I wanted to talk to you guys about a new series. Um, I guess you can call it a show. It is a Facebook series and I am addicted. Like every time a new episode comes out, I watch it immediately because it is so good and I feel like I just really like it and I really like the way that it's um, created. I really like the way that they sit around and talk. Okay, so let's just get to what show I'm talking about, right? Okay, I am talking about Red Table Talk with Jada Pinkett Smith, her mother, Adrienne, and Willow Smith, um, Jada Pinkett Smith's daughter. I think she's like 17 um, and it's called Red Table Talk. It is a Facebook series show. So if you have a Facebook, you can subscribe to this show to be notified every time an episode goes live. But it is so good, you guys. The first three episodes of the show have come out already. The reason I think I love it so much is because it is multi-generational. Like you have her mother, like Jada's mother. Then you have Jada. And then you have Jada's daughter. And it's just really neat to see those three different perspectives. Because, you know, they all grew up in different, um, you know, eras, like generations. And so not only do you have different perspectives from, you know, generational backgrounds, but just as, you know, the grandmother who is also the mother, you know, and then you have the mother and then you have the daughter. And I just hearing all of it and being having those people in one room, like, could you imagine having your daughter, you and your mother sit down and having discussions about motherhood and life? Like, I just feel like that would be really, really good. Um, if you have, you know, a family that can talk and actually sit around the table and talk about deep stuff like that. The first three episodes came out. The first episode was really good. I thought I didn't know what to expect when I first went into the show. The first episode was about co-parenting. So it was about Jada and um, I forget Will Smith's ex-wife, but they had a child together and then Jada came into the picture and she had a co-parent. I just thought, man, like right out of the gate, you're talking about something so serious. There's no fluff. And... Then they invited on um, Will Smith's ex-wife and Jada and showed Jada and her talking and basically like what each other felt as they were going through this process of, you know, Jada's now part of the family and she's trying to also be the mom and like how to coexist in each other's lives with a child involved. And it was really, really good, you guys. Um, If you are a co-parenting mama, I suggest like there's not a lot of tips, but I feel like just from watching them to hash it out and then being able to talk now um, in hindsight, it does give a lot of perspective into the way that you can approach a situation like that, if you know what I mean. The second t- the second day or the second episode that they had was m- about mothers. It was like a Mother's Day tribute, but it was really like, what has your mom taught you? And I thought that that was really insightful. It was really good. Um, not as like practical as um, the first episode, but just more appreciative of like, hey, look, like your mom has given you certain things that you may not have realized that shape who you are, um, which I think we often take for granted because, you know, Sometimes we are just annoyed by our parents or we're irritated by them or we take them for granted or, you know, like, et cetera, et cetera. And so it was really cool to just see them appreciate each other and like what they brought to um, each other's lives. The third episode, which is the last one that I've seen so far, is Surviving Loss. And I thought that it was really deep. Um, And so there were some things that they each kind of shared that, the other person didn't know about the other person in regards to surviving loss. Willow, it was for self-harm. Um, Jada, it was the loss of Tupac and just like loss throughout her life in general. And so let's get to why I'm talking about this show and why I decided to make an episode. What's so fascinating is that I can watch this show and think, man, that's really great. How cool is that? Like they're talking about so many great things and not even realizing that I have that in my own life. I have a mother. 
I am a mother, and then I have a daughter, and my daughter has a grandmother. She has a couple, actually, a few. So why is it that I am so fascinated with the show, but yet I don't feel like I can do that in my own house? That seems a little odd to me. So I did something a couple weeks back, and my daughter is getting to the age she's eight, so she's getting a little sassy, you know. Um, one of those traits that you hate that they have, but you see exactly where they get it from, and it's from me, <laughs> you know, and so I can't, um, it's like the double-edged sword. So one day her and I were just walking, and I was like, you know what, why is it that we don't just talk about the future? Why is it that we don't talk about how we are affecting each other? Like on the real, she's eight, she can understand what I'm saying. A lot of our eight-year-old daughters are way learning about way more than we did when we were eight. And so I just told her she was having an attitude. And I said, you know what? You are having this attitude and I get it. Like I understand it. Some things can be frustrating, but you have to get it under control because I can't communicate with you when you have this attitude. And I mean, there's room for mistakes, of course, But when you grow up, if you continue to have this attitude and it becomes a habit and it becomes worse, you and I are not going to be able to talk. We're not going to be able to have conversations. We're not be we're not going to be able to get along. And the majority of our time is going to be spent fighting because you're going to be a teenager and you're going to want independence and you're going to want to feel like you're doing it on your own. You're going to want to be you and you're going to want to grow and explore who you are. And at the same time, having an attitude and having, um, you know, disrespect towards me, you and I are going to clash. And so I said, I'm just making you aware because I want to be able to communicate with you. I want to stay friends with you. I want to be close with you. I want to be a good mom to you. And so I need you to help me out. I need you to work on your attitude because if you continue, it's going to get really bad when you're a teenager. And where this conversation came from, you guys, I have no idea. It just came to me while we were walking and I felt like I needed to say it because it is actually something that I'm fearful of. So then I thought, why would I not share that with her? If she knew how I felt about something that's going on between us that I'm afraid that's going to cause a rift between us later on when she's a teenager, why would I not let her know so that way she knows why it's really important to me? So I'm not just always saying, you know, stop with the attitude. Um, you know, we're telling her no. And, and when she asks why, like, because I said so, one of those things. But if I really tell her, like, hey, it's because when you become a teenager, if you have this attitude, it's going to, like, ruin our relationship. And for me as well. You know, like, if somebody comes at you with an attitude, you get into defensive mode. And I explain that to her. And so, and that's about it. And she just nodded her head and said that she understood and said, okay. And And now I can actually see her making an effort. But I'm curious why it is that we don't have more conversations like this with our daughters, Um, you know, mom to daughter, because we all know that that is the hardest relationship. I don't know about my son yet. You know, he is a strong-willed child, which we should have a whole other episode on. Um, But my relationship with him is a lot different than my relationship with my daughter. And I know what they say, you know, when they become teenagers, mommies and daughters are like enemies and they butt heads. And so I wanted to share with you guys some really quick tips, or I'm going to at least try to make it quick, to talking to your daughter. So tip number one, timing and easing into your questions. So I think that if you've never done this before, it makes you really nervous to start doing it. And then you think that you have to make a big deal about it. Like you have to schedule time just you and her to sit her down and tell you how you'd like to change a relationship I'm not sure how that would really go down I know personally I think it depends on what kind of child you have and if she's going to respond better if you make her aware of some things I think the best way to do it in my opinion would to be if you did want to sit them down is to say hey like I really want to be able to talk to you I'm going to try to do a better job at being open and being available and put it on you. Because if you say, if you go to them and you say, hey, like, I really want to talk to you, but you're so closed off and you go to your room and you shut the door and you don't want to talk to me, then they're already going to have that wall up and they're going to be defensive and they're not going to, it's not going to open them up any more than they already are. So um, ease into your questions. Another point that I wanted to make in this first um, tip is that you can't just be walking alongside him and, you know, then just jump out at like, have you had sex before? Out of, <laughs> out of nowhere, you know, like, so ask them how their day was at first or ask them, you know, I always ask my kids, like, who'd you play with today? Would you, you know, who'd you sit with at lunch? 
did anything funny happen? Um, did anything happen that made you mad? Was anybody left out today? You know, and you just, and listen. So I think that's another thing is that we really have to listen and um, to what our kids are saying and who their friends are. Because that was my biggest pet peeve when I was a teenager is I would always tell my mom about my friends and I would say, oh, you know, like, Stephanie would do this or that and she was dating blah 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 but Amanda really liked him and da 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 and then I would come back to her with the same issue the next day and she'd be like who's Stephanie um really mom like I just I just told you who Stephanie was like 70 times yesterday side note before I go on to tip number two is I did research when finding these so these aren't just coming from me I don't think I am the know-all end-all be-all of advice for parents I think that I just am really into doing the research and finding out what actual parents think and then teenagers think and then kind of putting it together and seeing what I agree with as well and then this is what I came up with so let's move on to tip number two make mom daughter dates I think I did another episode about this kind of um, but make it a thing. It doesn't have to be like a whole spa day or like something weird or, you know, just you can go running together. Like, hey, do you want to go walk the dog together every, you know, and then just ask her again next week. Ask her again next week. Um, and it could be like going to get Manny Petties together, going on a run together, walking the dog together, something that you know that you would both enjoy doing and then make it a thing. Like it doesn't even have to be a weekly thing. It could be every other week, a monthly thing, just something for you and her And it makes her really feel like she is seen, like she's valued. And probably at first she's going to be like, oh my gosh, mom. But if you you do it, I guarantee you're going to end up having conversations that you wouldn't have otherwise. And you're both at the end of the night going to be glad that you did it. Okay, so tip number three is judgment-free zone. So I think that this means that, you know, girls really, really value being able to talk to their mothers without feeling like, the moment they tell you like something so serious or what they feel is serious. Now you have to remember like we've been 16, we've been 17, we've been 18, we've been 19. We have all that perspective now. We have all all the things that we wish we could have done. We have hindsight and all that. They've only been 16 once. This is completely new to them. It's a big deal because this is the first time that they're being 16. This is their life that they're in right now. And so I think that One thing I'm going to try to do and one thing that I was made aware of in researching is that I really am going to have to put myself in her shoes and understand that even though it seems silly to me or dramatic to me or um, not a big a deal as she's making it, that for her it is a big deal. Like this is huge in the life of a 16 year old and I need to treat it as such. Um, Because when you like laugh and say, oh my gosh, that's ridiculous. Are you serious? You're worried about that? You know, when they come to you with something, then of course they're not going to talk to you. If we freak out, because you know we do, we freak out. (laughs) So I'm tip number three should be do not freak out. Um, And I'm not saying to just let them get away with everything and be the cool mom. No, that's not what I'm saying, because then you're going to raise somebody completely different and you don't want that child either. I'm saying for the time being, like if they call you, they're at a party and they say, mom, I snuck out of my friend's house. I'm at a party. I'm in a really uncomfortable situation. Will you come and get me? The last thing that I think that you should do when you get in the car with them is to pick them up and say, I told you, I can't believe you. Da, 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 da. Do you know how dangerous this was? Instead, make it a safe place so that way they know, hey, whenever something bad happens, whenever... I'm in a situation that is not great whenever I'm doing something that is not what I'm supposed to do or I'm in danger or I'm hurt or I'm scared I can call my mom and I know that for in that moment she's going to just give me love she's going to give me comfort she's going to you know come to the I'm going to come to the car and she's gonna be like I understand I've been there um you know let's go home we'll talk about it another day. Okay, so then tip number four is don't use it against her. So if you do get that call and you play it cool, then you don't come back the next day and say, and just like totally ream into them. Now, I think that you can have a conversation for sure. You need to tell them like how serious the choices that they made were. And obviously there should be consequences. But I think that the key here about not using it against her is if you're in that moment, you're not going to be able to freak out or use it against like the situation to your advantage to use it for, um, you know, a learning lesson right then and there or to embarrass her, whatever. 
um, is if you guys come up with a plan beforehand. So if you say, hey, I just want to let you know there's going to be times when you're going to make the wrong choices. There's going to be times when you feel like you have nobody else to turn to and you're afraid to call me, but I want you to know that you can always call me. And in those moments when you call me and you need me, I will be there. And we might not talk about it then, but we will talk about it later. But I want you to know in the moment, I will always be there. I will always be the first one to support you. I have your back. Um, And then depending on the situation, we'll have to deal with it the days after. But in the moment, I am like your go-to. I think that sets you both up for success because then she already knows what to expect versus the night of or like, you know, if something happens, she's not contemplating calling you or not because she's not sure how you're going to react or how it's going to go down. And then maybe it prevents her from calling you. And also, you are prepared. Like, you already made this agreement. This is how I need to show up. And so you can prepare yourself in, like, this is what I told her I was going to do. I'm going to do that to the best of my ability, you know. And then you guys can really follow through that and have that um, trust. Tip number five is you have to share a little to get a little. So when I was doing research, a lot of the things that I was reading that teenagers were writing was that my mom says she understands what I'm going through, but how could she? Because I don't know anything about her life. Like how, in what way would she know that I am going through something that she knows about? And I think this is going to be age specific because you're not going to want to share stories of your college days with your eight-year-old daughter. Like I won't go there anytime soon. I think we have to edit our experiences for the ages that our kids are in, but also let them know a little bit about us because they need to know that we're human too, that we're not perfect and we're not, you know, on the throne saying, here's the rules and we know all the things, but never really letting them know exactly why it is we want them to make these decisions this way and just giving them insight. Like I think that if I knew more about that, about my mom and stuff, which a lot of it I did, um, but she never personally talked to me about it. I, I heard it from just other people. And so, you know, you want to hear it directly from your mom. It's not as valid if it's from anybody else. And my last tip for you is don't freak out. This was another thing that I realized a lot of teens were writing about and blogging about as I researched this is that they would tell their mom something and it would be the look, you know, or the raising of the eyebrows or the you must be really dumb looks or, you know, the I'm getting ready to just punish you to all get out looks or all, you know, or laughing or gasping or, you know, all those things. I think that we need to be aware that they can see our feelings on our faces And immediately they can tell that they're not in a safe place and they're going to shut down. And this is really hard, right? Because like all through motherhood, I've been perfecting my mom look. And now all of a sudden I have to not use my mom look. And so I think that it's going to be a It's going to be a thing that we have to just really work hard at doing um, because when they get older, our relationship is going to change. And so it's going to be less of don't do that and less of I'm listening, I'm here for you, and then don't do that. (laughs) The way that I'm kind of thinking about it is that be the mom that you needed when you were a teenager. Even now at eight years old, I can see our dynamic of our relationship start to change versus when she was younger where it was like, mom is the, is she knows everything and I will listen to, you know, all the things because she keeps me safe and um, she knows better and now it's, I need to test and see this for myself, but I need to know that my mom will be there when I fall. So there you have it, guys. I hope you can use these tips and I hope that they're valuable to you. I did a lot of research, like I said, and so I really, really try to bring you guys value um, and things that are actually helpful um, and not just my opinion. So I also just really wanted to say thank you to everybody's love and support and encouragement. If you haven't seen it, I shared some videos on my YouTube channel about finding my biological father and man you guys like the response is crazy I I only thought that maybe like a couple people would be able to relate to me and that they would find encouragement in it but um just man the comments and everything is amazing and so I'm going to continue to share more videos about my journey um on there on the YouTube channel and so I hope that you check it out hope you message me leave me comments um and let me know what other um topics you would like me to cover thanks for listening guys catch you later 